For those of you that have been asking in my videos and live streams about the UPS, well, I can tell you the wait is now over. Here is the UPS tower, and there is also a 2U version that's been introduced that is gonna be available later on this year. Let me answer a few questions for you straight away. Yes, it has a built-in NUT server. Yes, it integrates with Unify Network. And yes, it will shut down your UNAS cleanly. So let's take a look. Straight away, this is a bit of a chunky one. This comes in at just over eight kilos. If we have a look at the front first, we have a few LEDs along here. When we turn the power button on, we have some fans along the side. We have some more ventilation on either side as well. And at the back is where most of the important stuff is. So we can have a look here. We have five surge protected C14 plugs along with battery backup. And then we have another five surge protected without battery backup. We have a 100 meg ethernet port at the top right here. And we have a gigabit ethernet surge protected network in and out. So you can use that for whatever you need. We also have the inputs. And for those of you in the EU and UK, you have an input here of 220 to 240 volts. You also have a breaker button here too. Alongside with these, we get a couple of other things inside the box. You get yourself your cable, which you'd come to expect. So this is an EU version because it's come from the EU store. And then you have the information that normally comes with all of the Ubiquiti devices as well. In terms of pricing, we have the UPS tower, which comes in at $159. And the 2U version, which we'll cover a little bit later, comes in at $279. Let's talk about the capacity. And this takes 1000 voltage amps, and it can handle up to 600 watts worth of power. In terms of runtime, if you're running this at full load, it will do two minutes in terms of runtime. And if you're running at half load, it will do up to seven minutes. In terms of battery charge time, you're looking at six to eight hours recovery to 90%. And don't worry, we're gonna put all of this to the test in this video and see how well it works. I don't know if we will be able to run it at full load, but we'll definitely run it and see how long it takes to shut down. And then we'll wait for the battery to completely die and then we'll run a recharge test. So let's talk about how we get this set up. So we'll take a look at these at the back right here. So we're gonna plug in our power port. Now I have the Pro XG G8 PLE next to me, which I'm gonna get powered up. And for me to do that, I'm gonna be using this cable right here. So we have a C14 plug on one side, C13 on the other, and we can plug that into number one right here. Um, I'm gonna plug the other side into my eight port switch. In terms of network connectivity, we can go straight here to the 100 meg port at the top. And if we wanna get this powered up, we can go and plug in a power cable. So we plug that in, we can turn this up. Yes, the cable management isn't exactly the best. And then we can go and hold this power button here for a few seconds, let go, and we can see that's now powering up. So that has a white light just here. And then you'll see these five lights illuminate along here because this is already charged to 100%. So this is all powered up and ready to go. And I'm showing you Unify Network now and we can see the UPS tower right here. And it's got an IP address, it's picked it up. We can go and click adopt device and we'll give that a few moments while it goes off and adopt and it shouldn't take too long. And lo and behold, it's literally taken about 10 seconds to get connected. So let's take a look at what's going on inside here. So we have a connected UPS tower. We're connected into, so I said I'm going into my Pro XG. Uh, we're connected here with 100 meg. Now it just shows you all of them as enabled. It doesn't actually show you which ones are connected at this point. So I know I definitely have one outlet connected into here but um, it doesn't actually show me that here it just shows me whether they're enabled or not it doesn't give me any other information than that in terms of power utilization it shows me zero of 600 watts and then it also shows me the charging battery as well whereas i initially thought we were at 100 percent, it seems we are at also we are at 90 percent in terms of device pairing, it shows me the UNAS Pro, so I can go and very easily pair this. So this is for the safe shutting down option. And it says right here at the top, the UPS will shut down devices after 10 seconds without power. And to bring the devices back online, you can use the remotely power off, followed by the remotely powered on button in the UPS settings. And again, we'll be testing that as well. So to pair your devices, it's gonna ask you for an email address and password. That's your UI details that you have logged in with. So I'm just gonna type this in right now and pair it. And then we click pair and there we go. We can see the UNAS Pro is now paired. So we're happy right there. And then we have the insights and then we can go to settings. Now we can give this a name. I can call this IW UPS Tower. So we're just gonna tweak the name slightly and we click apply. Um, Give it DHCP or static address. Generally, I would recommend to give this a static address, especially if you're going to be using this as a NUT server because the IP address is what you might be using as an ID. And then we're going to look at the NUT server. Now, what it says right here is share UPS status with other devices. Use the ID and host name and port when configured with third-party devices for safe shutdown. So we can click the NUT server right here and it says give yourself an ID. So I'm just going to call this, um, I'm just going to call this NUT server. So that's the ID. 
Keep the port default. Now, again, keep in mind if you're going across VLANs, you may need to allow ports open to be open for this to communicate successfully, especially with third party devices. And then we can give it some login credentials. And for me, just for this test case, I'm just going to give it the same username and password. And, and that's pretty much it. In terms of manage, we have the LED on the front. You can leave that on and off, set device replacement, load configuration, manual firmware update, locate restart. And this is that remote power off and then remote power on button that we saw previously. So we can go and apply changes right here. And pretty much that is all there is to see in terms of the settings for the UPS itself. So we're going to be putting this to the test right now and we're going to get this set up. So I have this down here. It is a bit of a mess at the moment because I'm doing some rewiring. So it's a bit of a mess at the moment down here. So we have our UDM Pro Max, which we're going to put in. And down here we have the UNAS Pro. The reason I have some of the discs out is because I'm actually looking to reuse some of the discs in another NAS. And then at the top, just up here, we have a couple of switches and an aggregation switch. So we have this now plugged in but not powered up and for anybody that's interested in terms of the wattage I'm not going to turn this around but it's running at two watts in terms of completely idle so not even powered on and if I power this on just give that a minute that's just booting up right there and if we go back across see if this changes anyway peaked up slightly to about three and a half watts in terms of how much power it's taking. I'm gonna get everything plugged in and then we're gonna come back and see how much power it takes then. So now we have these all plugged in, everything on my network is off at the moment and we're gonna plug the network cable in and then we've got the power on and we've seen how much power is being drawn from there. So it's just jumped up to about four watts at this point and now we're gonna start plugging everything in. Obviously this is a cable management nightmare at the moment but this is just for testing this out. We're going to go all along this side because we want the battery back up. So we're going to plug everything into here and we'll slowly start hearing everything power back up. So I have my UDM Pro Max, I have my aggregation switch, I have my 24 port switch, I have my 10 port switch and I have my aggregation switch. So these are all plugged in here. We have a network cable plugged in and we're a full battery, which we'll take a look at. I have everything plugged in now, and you can see on the right-hand side of the screen that the UPS tower is there. I've changed the NUT server details slightly from what we discussed a little bit earlier, but we can see the power utilization, 192 or 186 watts out of 600. So that's running five different devices, as I mentioned earlier. So you've still got a fair amount of room on this. You've got five additional plugs on the back that you can use. So there's a decent amount. This is still charging. 93% uh, so we'll wait till that goes 100% before we pull the plug. Um, I have my screen right here which actually has plugged directly into my Proxmox server because that's what we've configured as the third party device that we're going to be testing to shut down with. We have the UNAS paired so that's also on there as well and again for any of you that are interested at the moment this is currently pulling about 250 watts in terms of that one plug from the UPS itself. So that gives you a, a rough idea as to what's happening in terms of power. So hopefully you find these numbers useful and if there is something else you wanna see, let me know down in the comments and I'll see if I can do that. So I'm just gonna show you at this point how to quickly set up the Proxmox server um, and how to get that configured. So I'll quickly show you that and then we'll come back. Hopefully this will be charged by then and then we can take a look at pulling the plug. Logging into Proxmox, and let me put a quick disclaimer, I'm no Proxmox or Linux expert. I've just done a quick Google and got some of the commands that I need to get this going. So if there is a better way to do this, let me know down in the comments. But this is what I have found the easiest way for me to do. So we go into Proxmox and then we open up a shell. This opens up as root for you. And then we just do an install of the client, which is probably already going to tell me that it's installed. So apt get install nut client and I can leave these commands down in the description if that's what you want let me know and I'll pop them down there um, and there you go it's already saying it's, it's done and installed then we need to edit a couple of files the first one and I'm just pasting these commands in because I've already done this already but so we will type in nano and then etc nut and then nut conf we open this up and it brings this file here and the bit that we want to add is this right here so we want to add mode equals net client right so this is now acting as the client it's not the actual server so it's then going to connect to your ups for you and then once you've done that there's another file that we need to edit and that is the ups mon conf file so we can paste that again nano etc nut ups mon.conf 
we can open that up. I believe you can get away with doing it with just the monitor line. But again, if you want to copy and replicate exactly what I'm doing, you're welcome to do so. And what it is right here, it shows you monitor and then your system and then power values, username, password. Is it primary or secondary? And that's what I've put right here. We have the ID at IP address. We have the port number. We have the power value, which is one. We have the username, which is my UPS. And then we have a password, which is a very basic password. So this is just for testing. I am going to change this once we've completed this video. And then we're having this as a slave, so a secondary. That's pretty much it right there. That, that's all you need to do to get that bit set up. And then we need to make sure that the nut monitor is enabled. And then we would do that just by system control or system CTL, enable nut monitor, and it's already enabled. So I don't need to worry too much about that. And then we're going to type in system CTL status nut client. We can press enter and you can see this is now connected. We're more interested in this line right here. We can see UPS, UPS at 10.11.201.3493, secondary power value one. So this is all now set up and ready to go. So when we pull the plug, that's what I found has worked for me. I will add, I did try it in Home Assistant, but I was getting some errors in Home Assistant. And from what I understand at this point, it's actually an error on the Home Assistant side, not something on the Ubiquiti side. You can see now we are at 100% in terms of battery. We're using about 200 watts worth of power. So about 33%, which is good. We're full battery and I'm gonna pull the plug and let's see what happens. So I have my stopwatch that I'm using right here. I'm gonna do this at the same time. So we're gonna start and then we're gonna pull this plug too. So let's do that. Now there is a slight buzzing noise that you do hear on the back of this when you do pull the plug But I think at the point of having a power failure I think that's the least of your worries at this point So let's see how long that takes it's going to slowly start shutting down and there we go So we're about 50 seconds in and you can see that's shutting down now And so is that that's now shutting down also as well successfully and we can see the lines the lights on here are Also going down too. we're now at one minute and I'm hoping that this box right here, this is the Proxmox box. I'm hoping this is gonna shut down at some point as well uh, in a few moments. Now, because the gateway has shut down and I don't have access to it anymore on the laptop, the only thing I have in terms of to go by, how much battery is left, is the lights on here. At the moment, you can see I have two lights left just up here. So we're about two, two and a half minutes in so far. Um, so we're still going strong at this point and I'm gonna see it will be those switches that are at the top that are gonna power off once this goes, because obviously there's no more battery left. But it's safe to say at this point, it's definitely doing its job. It's keeping the lights on for the time being, giving you ample time to get everything shut down that you'll need to get shut down. And as I just stopped the recording right there, you'll see that that's got no signal. So that's definitely shut down the Proxmox box for me, which is perfect. So it sent the signal across, it's said that it's been a power failure and that's gone and shut down. So that took just over three minutes while it was running on the battery mode. Now at this point, we're down to a single light on here. So I am gonna wait for this to fully power down. I'll probably leave this running for the time being now so we can see in terms of the time of how long that's gonna take. And at this point right here, I will note that there's no more lights left on here. So we are gonna be probably turning this off imminently and we're running at just over five minutes at this point. So five minutes and 15 seconds. So let's see how much longer this does before this completely dies out. And we are just over seven minutes, so seven minutes and 20 seconds. And I'm gonna show you just up here that everything is still powered on at this point. So we still have lights on here. So we still have things that are plugged in and still powering and going. So let's see how much longer this goes for. And we can see a red light appear on here now, which means the battery is probably running very low at this point. So it's getting to the point where it probably is gonna just turn itself off in a few moments. And there we go. That seems to have fully shut down at around about 10 minutes and 45 seconds, give or take. You can see the lights are gone completely blank on them and even everything up here has completely shut down. So what we're gonna do at this point, let's get everything reconnected. Let's get it powered on and then we will see how long it takes to fully recharge. And also in terms of power draw, we'll see how much power it takes to get powered back up. For those that might be asking how hot this got, so I have my, I've just literally moved this from the other side to here. And um, if I run this across, you can see what we're looking at, what we're looking at just here. So 35, 36, 37, 42, so it's a little bit warm there, 43, 44, 45, 46, 
47. So it's getting a bit warm on this side. On the front, it's not really that warm. And on the back, it's not really that warm either. And then on the top, if there is any sort of heat on here. So we're looking at 33, 40. I think it's a little bit warmer around here. Uh, if I can able to show you that, 41. So that's the kind of heat you're getting off that. And this has been running for probably a few hours uh, on the best part of it. And also in terms of the heat when we had all the load running on this as well. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take this and we're gonna plug it back in again. And yes, I have moved it back over to here just for the sake of this recording. So we can plug this back in and get it powered back up. And we'll see what this looks like in terms of getting it. You heard the click there, which means it's gone back onto power mode and it's starting to power up. And then we're gonna jump into Unify Network and have a little look at what's going on here. So it's probably been about I'm going to add, so I've started the timer. So I've started the timer there, 22 seconds, because I've plugged it back in in terms of the recharge time. But I'm going to add about 10 minutes because it's taken me 10 minutes to go from there to here and get everything set back up again. Um, but going into Unify Network, interestingly, the battery is already showing at 35%. So not quite sure what that might be. It might be just a software thing, but I've just powered it up and I can also see we have two lights on here as well. And that was when I plugged it in. For anybody that wants to know the draw on the device, it's pulling about 16 watts worth of power at this point. But I find it very interesting that we're already at 40%. And it says it takes about six to eight hours to go to a 90% recovery. So let's give it a go. Let's see how it works and how long it takes. So we're already at 40% and we'll, we've been running for a few minutes plus give or take 10 minutes. So let's talk about the results. So after 45 minutes, we were already at 50%. And then we had two hours, which we got to 75%, three hours, we got to 80%. And then at around about four and a half hours is where we got to 90%. And after that, after two hours and 15 minutes, we got that final 10%. So it took roughly about six hours and 45 minutes to do a full recharge on this. Let's talk a little bit about the 2U version that's gonna be coming. Now, this is definitely coming in October at some point, we just don't know when. And there's a slight increase in power. Obviously, we have a slightly bigger battery in there. This can take up to 1000 watts and 1440 voltage amps. In terms of the run times, the specs currently tell us it's about 2.3 minutes in terms of full load and about eight minutes in terms of half load. So it really depends on how much you're going to be putting in there. It has similar sort of port functionalities with the 100 meg port and two one gigabit ports for surge in and out. So depending if you're looking to put something through there, you can do. The main difference between the tower and the rack mount is obviously the form factor. The other thing to keep in mind is there are eight sockets on the back of the 2U version versus the 10 on the tower version. So keep that one in mind also as well. And also to add, they have the same sort of split in terms of 50% battery and 50% just surge protection. So let me know what you think of the latest UPS. Now, from what I understand, this is the start. There is more coming down the line and I look forward to seeing what more they're gonna be releasing. But if you have a wish list. Let me know down in the comments also as well what you would like to add to these additional setups. If you want the link to the products, they're also down there as well. They are an affiliate link, so it does help the channel. For now, this is Inside Wire, and I'll see you in the next one.